<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into You are a G-Swap podcast with Katie Silcox. Hello, beautiful people. It's summer. Have you noticed? And have you noticed that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing about what we should put on our skin? You guys, Ayurveda, as always, has such good, good recommendations. You know, the rates of skin cancer are on the increase and the rates of sunscreen use are on the increase. So what's up with that? There's a lot of contentious debate over how much sun do we need? Is sunscreen good for us? Is it not good for us? Is the sun good for us? Or should we hide away from the sun underneath our hats and jackets and umbrellas? What's the deal? So... First of all, there's a lot of fear around around it and around the sun. And, you know, from time immemorial, human beings have been worshiping the sun. The sun is something that um, is associated with, with life, with birth, with energy, with resurrection, with new experiences, with expansion, with upward vibrancy and energy. The light of the sun is what brings light to the darkness. And so... It's just normal that we want to be in the sun. And what we're now finding is that the sun's really good for us. Unfortunately, with the ozone depleting and um, the chemical shitstorm that we all find ourselves in, um, there can be some balance that we need to bring in terms of our relationship to the sun. And let me tell you, I'm a major sun worshiper. I come from a lineage of sun worshipers. My mother was was a major sun worshiper in the 1970s. And um, she would, like your mom may have done this, uh, she would lather her body up in baby oil and just hang out in the sun, you know, with one of those weird uh, kind of, what are they called? Reflectors. (laughs) My mom used to skip school when it was a sunny day. And um, yeah, it it runs in my my blood. It's fun, right? It feels so good to be in the sun. There's a reason why people scramble all over the world to the beaches where they live in these warmer summer months and lay in the hot sun and take in all that prana from the energy of the sun. The sun carries information and that information enters into our body through the gateway of the skin, which is our longest uh, and our largest organ. The sun is literally giving us information. And so a lot of our seasonal affective disorder and our plummeting vitamin D levels uh, are a direct result of the fact that we've lost our natural relationship with light, with the sun. Our ancestors may not, may or may not have been out in the sun all day long, but what they did do was have a relationship with it and, and watch it and watch these rising and falling of the sun every day. And that has an effect on our biorhythms, on our metabolism. It has a direct effect on our circadian rhythms, our wake sleep rhythms. We're getting that information constantly from the sun. Um, the teachings of Ayurveda say there are two moments during the day when that information, that download of pure prana is the highest. And that is the most sattvic or the most clarifying and true and purifying. We get that information dropped down into our heart that says, you know what, sister, it's a new day, right? Or you know what, my brother, it is, it is time to go to bed and let it all go. That's information from the sun. And we get it in the, of course, morning sunrise and the sunset. So first thing, make sure that you can be as much as you can outside in the sunrise and the sunset. First and foremost, that's going to change your health immediately. I, I recently just moved into a, a house. I've been living in the yoga studio for about a year and a half. And 
there was nowhere to go outside. And, and I, and I, when I got my new house, it was just so nice. Every morning I can go out and just sit in the sunrise and every afternoon or night I can go and sit in the sunset. So what's, what's up with the sunscreen, you guys? Um, okay. I'm not a big fan. And at the same time, I think we have to be judicious. So we need to have some type of protection from the sun, especially from the hours of around 11 to 2 or 3 PM. That's when the sun UVA B rays are the most intense. Um, but you still need to be out in the sun during that time. Why? Because that's when you get the most amount of vitamin D. Vitamin D needs to hit the skin in order to penetrate into the body. So try to be out during those hours, 10 to 3, best 11 to 2, for just at least 15 minutes to get that vitamin D light. Um, Americans are said to have uh, vitamin D deficiency issues really badly, um, like 87%. That's a lot of us are vitamin D deficient. Um, So sunscreen use and sun cancer are increasing at the same rate. So what we're now seeing is that we're all lathering on all the sunscreen, trying to protect ourselves from the sun, but we were lathering chemicals on our body. And Ayurveda is like, don't put anything on your skin that you would not eat. I'll repeat, do not put anything on your skin that you would not eat because your skin eats. Your skin is just eating everything you put on it. Um, So, we still need to protect ourselves. If you are a white person, you will need more care than anyone else. And if you're a pitta person, a more fiery type, you're going to also need more care than everyone else. Um, Interesting fact, just going back quickly to the sunscreen debate, the environmental working group found that nearly half of all sunscreens hold carcinogenic chemicals. And they create biochemical and cellular level changes that disrupt every function. They were full of endocrine disruptors, which mess with especially women's hormones. They were full of chemicals that have been proven to be related to allergies. Um, Even chemicals that increase your rate of skin tumors. Um, And the... Uh, at least half of them were found to have chemicals that have been proven to show risk increases for future sun damage. So, I mean, this is like, this isn't like the hippie Alliance of Northern California. This is the environmental working group did a study. So what they found was that 90% of all consumer chemical based um, sunscreens, non-natural sunscreens, 90% are toxic and 60% just don't even work. Three out of five sunscreens on the market that you go to CVS, you go to Target, you go to Walmart, you get these sunscreens, three out of five don't even protect you. So I'm, I don't use them unless I'm in just like a total pinch and I know I'm going to get burned and someone has some. Um, so throw out anything in your, in your, I was going to say your kitchen, which is also true. Throw out anything in your bathroom that you wouldn't feel comfortable sticking your finger in and sticking that in your mouth. Okay. Just that is that simple. It's so easy. Um, so what can we do? All right, you guys. So Ayurveda is a holistic solution. So we have holistic life remedies. So first of all, we want to have a healthy diet. When you eat good food and you have healthy digestion, your skin is a byproduct of the food that you put in your mouth through the gateway of your lymphatic system your blood, and all the way down into your muscle tissue. So your skin, according to Ayurvedic medicine, is actually a byproduct of what's called mamza datu, which is your muscle tissue. So um, if you have healthy digestion leading to healthy muscles, you're going to have healthier skin in general. Um, You also want to just stay really good and hydrated, especially in the summer months. Uh, and, And that doesn't mean just drinking a ton of cold ice water. It means drinking things that hold lubricants in them. So like licorice tea, rose tea, hibiscus tea, um, rose hips are really good. Um, marshmallow tea, licorice tea, I already mentioned, uh, all of these are cooling and demulcent and will help plump up the skin full of water, but not in a kind of water retentive sort of way. You also want to stay hydrated on the outside. 
So if you ever come to my house or my studio, I've got little bottles of spritzers everywhere. I've got one right here. And I just spritz myself all the time, slightly obsessively. Um, keep your skin moist, mist and spritz. Uh, we love Pavani. They're our sponsor this month and they have some of the best skin spritzers out there. So check out the link for Pavani we have in the show notes. Another on that note, just let me say this. Another thing is it's not just about lathering on sunscreen when you're in the sun. That's a part of it. And we'll get there in a minute, but it's really about having a daily skincare routine, whether it be January or July Every day you're putting herbal infused oils on your body. And that's why I love Pavani. Um, they have a great Vata, Pitta and Kapha and other, you know, acne prone skin. They've got just a great um, product line. But what I like about the Pavani line is it just makes it super easy. So they have a Vata serum. They have a Vata scrub. They have a Vata spray. They have a Vata uh, moisturize. They have a Vata based everything. Um, and I kind of mix and match them depending on the seasons, but I know that every single day I'm putting oils on my skin that are full of both the oils and the herbs that are natural skin sunscreens that are natural skin protectants. And if you do get a burn, they're natural sun healers, skin healers. So, um, definitely make sure you have a skincare regime every single day that involves in some way, Ayurvedic herbs and oils. That's the most important part of this whole talk. So, um, check out the link in the show notes to just make it easy on yourself and you can buy their daily, um, skincare regime. Now those aren't, those aren't necessarily sunscreens, but what they are is they keep your skin healthy and resilient. So if you do get a burn or you do have some sort of carcinogenic chemical touch the skin, you've got those herbs there and those oils that are going to protect you. Um, okay. So let's say, you know, you're going to the beach, you're going to the pool, you're going on a long hike and you want to make some of your own sunscreen. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan of making mine because there are a lot of people that do a really good job. And so what I would say is, um, find a sunscreen that has mineral based natural zinc. It's awesome. So there's tons of those out on the market, natural mineral based natural zinc. They're going to have a natural SPF without any of the chemicals. Um, what else you want to have herbs in your oils like neem, sandalwood, shatavari, rose. Um, if you want, you can just buy coconut oil. Coconut oil has a two to eight SPF, and you can add to that helichrysum, lavender, rose, and or frankincense essential oils. And all of those um, particular oils are very high in skin protection. And, and again, like not only protection, but if there was damage, these essential oils help to heal it. So like I, I do coconut rose oil and then I've got a bottle of helichrysum and I'll just, and frankincense and I'll just put a couple drops in my hand and put that on my body. I just found this out this week. Carrot seed oil actually has 28 to 40 SPF naturally. So I'm just like immediately going to go buy a bottle of that um, on on Amazon, an organic version, and um, we'll find the best one for you guys and put it in the show notes as well. 28 to 40 SPF in natural carrot seed oil. I mean, what more do you want? I will say you need to reapply this, you know, every, every hour or two to keep up those SPF benefits. And then sesame oil, it's another good one. It's got around two to eight natural SPF. I mean, guys, with, with all that information from the Environmental Working Group, why aren't we all just buying carrot seed oil and slathering up when we go out and in, into the beach? What's great about these oils, too, is they nourish your skin. There's zero side effects. And then one more that's really good is wheat germ oil, 20 SPF. That's crazy. That's awesome. Um, and if you really want to geek out, you can make your own homemade Ayurveda-infused sunscreen. And I got this from a gal named Jenna Wolf at the Lotus Room, an Ayurveda healing center in Nashville, Tennessee. So shout out to the Lotus Room. Go by there if you're in Nashville and say hi to them from the Gee Spot and Katie Silcox. Um, if you're in Nashville, hello. 
Um, I want an Ayurveda healing studio in Charlottesville. One of you guys needs, one of you needs to, first of all, one of you that's taken Ayurveda school, you guys need to make one in Charlottesville. I'll help you. So how do I make it? It's, she's saying it's got 30 SPF, totally safe, all healing ingredients, zero side effects. You're going to need half a cup of coconut oil, half a cup of beeswax, one cup of shea butter, and two teaspoons of carrot seed oil, and four tablespoons of zinc, the non-nano version. Um, you put all those ingredients except the zinc into a large glass mason jar. Fill a medium saucepan with a few inches of water and place that on medium heat. Loosely fit the lid on the jar and place that in the water. And then just let all those ingredients melt together, completely shaking or stirring it, you know, to get it to all meld. And then once you've got all that, you're going to take it off the heat, put in the zinc, secure the lid, shake it up, and uh, sh you're going to have an amazing, beautiful sunscreen. Um, so you can stir it, stir it up, get that zinc powder mixed in there. And then you can put that in whatever you plan on keeping the sunscreen in um, and just let it cool. Um, really, really great. Just super easy. Let me know how it goes. If you guys make one of those natural sunscreens, I really want to try it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. Um, so that one has 35 to 40 SPF, you guys, that's amazing. There's no reason that anybody should be buying chemical sunscreen. Plus where's all that shit going? It's going in your body and then it's going out in the air and then the water, I'm so over it. Aren't you guys sick of, we should have laws immediately that just ban all these chemicals that just, they just do way more harm than any good. Um, lastly, on that note, if you're hard up and holding out and you love the sunscreen and you believe in it, look, we still like you. We're still friends with you. You don't have to believe in everything I say. My goodness, do what you want. But what I will say is just avoid any sunscreen that has oxobenzone in it, oxybenzone. Um, it's in about 40% of the sunscreens. It's been banned in Japan and a lot of, of Europe because it's been found to be a major endocrine disruptor and um, related to infertility, endocrine disruption in general, hormone imbalance, and low birth rates. So um, get rid of that one. Um, and just make sure that you're loving your skin. Remember the golden rule in Ayurveda, we don't put anything on our skin that we would not use in our kitchen, right? You want to be able to cook with the stuff that you put on your body. Uh, I love the feeling when my kitchen and my bathroom are kind of like one and the same. It just feels so, so, so beautiful and, and so right. All right, mamas, check out Pavani. We've got some amazing products. They have, as I said, these beautiful kits, the Vata, Pitta, and Kapha kits. Right now we're in the Pitta season, and that stuff is really good for almost everybody this time of the year. We love Pavani. They are homegrown mamas. They are from my Ayurveda school. They're making everything out in Grass Valley, California, and they make it with love. They infuse it with mantras. They make it with as much as they can, wild crafted, all certified organic, certified, certified pure therapeutic grade herbs. I've got my bottle right here of Kapha toner. It's got rose water, aloe vera, wonderful for the sun, witch hazel extract, lemon balm, lavender, oh, all good this time of the year as well. I'm spraying up. That's like the fourth time I've sprayed today. All right, beauties, enjoy your summer and take care of your skin. Put the pull